You're watching The Daily Decrypt, in currency competition we trust. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by the Merkel. When we heard that Jonathan Baha'i, dweller of the frozen north, had buried a blockchain hosting node under a bunker, our interest was piqued as seems to be the continual case in this new land of open-sourced competition, Jonathan told us something completely out of left field. Here he is. All right, well, Jonathan Baha'i, I heard about you from a blog post that you had published the other day in which you were describing that in order to make, in this particular instance, the BitShares blockchain, for which you are a node, uh, a witness, actually, you have buried your node under like a bunker or something. I don't even, you t- what have you done, Jonathan? <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually uh, broadcasting from the, what used to be CBC radio inside of a 64,000 square foot nuclear bunker data center. Uh, previously, it was the emergency center for the Canadian government and it was decommissioned in the late 90s. And uh, since then, it's uh, gone through changing some hands, but it finally ended up in my hands. So it uh, once served as one of the communication nodes for NATO and for the Department of Defense. And uh, the infrastructure, because of that, makes it well suited for high security data center operations. It was originally designed back in the 60s during the Cold War uh, to house up to 350 people in the event of a nuclear, biological, or chemical attack. And, and you, you own it now. You, That's right. You're there now. Yes. Wow. Wow. So do you, okay, do you run nodes or miners for any other cryptocurrencies at this time there as well? Well, right now we are doing some, uh, we do have a mining pool that we're operating. It's currently in beta right now. It's called Bunker Mining. Uh, it was originally called uh, Mining Bit Shares. Uh, we took over that mining pool uh, late la- or the middle of last year, and uh, since then we've been uh, developing it. Uh, we had to port it over when Bit Shares 2.0 came up came out, and since then we've still been in beta. But we are planning to uh, come out with it publicly next uh, month or two. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about the kind of incidents that you are seeking to protect your node against using this bunker. What, what, what threats exist that you would even want to do that? Well, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, I mean, most people, when they look at uh, world events, some people think we might fall into World War III, uh, in which case, uh, if any kind of nukes go off, you have what's called an EMP blast. Uh, that's an electromagnetic pulse. And what that does is that'll render all kinds of electronics useless. Uh, The blast from a nuclear blast, uh, the EMP, is much stronger than what could happen from a natural EMP event, in which case, uh, in my article, I talk about the threat uh, that uh, exists from the sun. Uh, All the time, the the Earth is being bombarded uh, by solar radiation. And uh, the Earth has a stratosphere that actually protects us uh, against that solar radiation. And uh, it causes the magnetic uh, field of the Earth to, to uh, flux and shift. And this happens all the time. Uh, what happens though is that in the event where that, uh, that shield uh, uh, weakens or it actually uh, shifts, uh, we become subject to that electromagnetic magnetic field from the solar uh, events, in which case our electronics become useless. Uh, what happens is that they get hit and then any kind of modern digital electronics would actually be susceptible to the magnetic fields, uh, rendering them useless. So in the event that that happens, uh, we're basically blasted back to the 1800s. Uh, hope you have, you know, candles and, uh, oil lamps to get around because you don't have flashlights. You don't have everything. All your electronics just die. So, yeah. Whoa. And so, like, would something as simple as a Faraday cage protect these things, or does one have to have a bunker like you do? No, a Faraday cage is effective, uh, okay. especially in a solar radiation event. Uh, lot, not a lot of people are using Faraday cages to protect their equipment, though. Uh, only really anybody who's looked at uh, uh, risk management or uh, uh, looked at, uh, you know, extreme cases would consider using a Faraday cage with their equipment. Hmm. Well, my goodness. And so, so 
is your how do you, how do you get like power to your BitShares node? I mean, is it just within the bunker or is it like underground under the bunker? The power that comes to us is with the utility. Uh, we do have uh, within the facility uh, multiple generators, which in the event that main power went out, we'd be able to use those generators for backup. Uh, but the node is uh, deep within the bunker. So it is, the bunker itself is a Faraday cage. Uh, it was built that way. Uh, it's also underground, which also helps. But oh. within the bunker, uh, the communication node, which was set up for NATO communications, is actually a shielded infrastructure. Uh, the code name for it was Samson node. And the reason they had that installed was because back in the day, in the 80s, basically, uh, Computing was susceptible to radio interference and being able to uh, pick up frequencies so that they could read data off of computers. And so building this hardened shell was to ensure that no data would escape from, from that, that particular place in the bunker. So it's almost like a building inside the building. So we got a Faraday cage, we got shielded infrastructure, and inside that, that's where all the data is kept. Golly. Are you are you aware of anybody else who uh, hosts crypto related infrastructure in a similar setup to you? No, I'm not. I was this this came up in a in a in a social channel actually. There's uh, the prospects of of hosting miners or or a big operation like that within a bunker isn't very likely, uh, simply because most of the bunkers located around the world, if they've been purposed for data centers, are located in centers that are very high cost and power. Uh, the power, because of that, and because miners, of course, you know, they have to consider all these things, it's not likely they're going to choose a facility like that to, to, to put their mining equipment in. Um, and yeah. the reason that uh, cost of electricity would not so much be a factor in bit shares in particular is because of its delegated proof of stake, right? So uh, you are not, you don't need to run an ASIC or any sort of proof of work intent energy intense miner to to be a witness in bid shares that's right at the current uh transaction per section transactions that uh, bid shares is running at uh, most of the nodes can run with just a virtual machine or a cloud or a cloud instance uh, mm -hmm. we can easily scale up to a dedicated server and so forth but uh, the requirements for bid shares is very light and so because of that the power requirements aren't high so you can really host a BitShares node anywhere in the world without having to worry about the cost involved. So let's let's talk more about your uh, being a well. So the term in BitShares is witness, but the equivalent in say a proof of work would be the miner. Uh, the equivalent in a non-delegated proof of stake would be a staker. But basically, you are one of the people who generates the BitShares blockchain and that is what your full note is for. You are one of the delegates. I believe they used to be called delegates before they were called witnesses. Is that right, in BitShares? That's right, yeah, in okay. BitShares 1.0, uh, they were called delegates, uh, mm -hmm. simply, simply that. Uh, it was a, a flat system where the delegate was elected, they would uh, run the nodes and so forth. There was different things that happened in the past where uh, a delegate didn't just represent a node. Sometimes the funds would go towards other things to support the network. And so in this new iteration of 2.0, uh, that broke out and we created different branches of delegation. So now we have a committee, we have witnesses, and then we also have workers. So uh, the, the stakeholders are able to vote for the particular uh, things that they support that are really exacted to the task of, of, of the people behind them. So witnesses are technical people. Uh, they are, they are uh, you know, witnessing the blocks and they're making sure that the network is up. Workers can, can be elected to do all kinds of multiple tasks. A lot of them are developers who are working on bug fixes and improving the blockchain. And then the committee, their tasks are to uh, basically uh, handle situations in regards to the fees that are involved in the network. So we make sure that uh, everything is uh, balanced and that uh, that's all working good. So uh, I'm also actually uh, on the committee in BitShares as well. Uh, so I actually serve on two different branches uh, within the, the uh, blockchain. Within BitShares governance. That's so right. then would it, would it be an accurate simplification to say that witnesses are the ones elected to run the infrastructure workers are the ones elected to develop the code base and committee members are the ones elected to sort of, I guess, deal with anything that doesn't 
fall into one of the first two categories? That's right. Well, yeah, they, they really focus on, I mean, their power uh, only goes into the fee structure within BitShares. The fee structure. So they I mean, have direct control over being able to change that, that part mm -hmm. of the, the network. Okay. And now uh, these positions are, as you said, uh, elected by stakeholders. And in bid shares, anybody who owns even one bid share is a stakeholder. That is that correct? Every bid share counts for one vote. That's right. Now, if you don't feel like you want to be involved in the voting process, or you just don't have time, or you don't understand it, uh, mm -hmm. we also have what's called proxy voting. So instead of you having to keep up on all the details of the different things that are happening, if there's somebody in the network who is a proxy that really is active within the community and understands what's going on and you like uh, what they represent and what their, uh, their vision for BitShares is, then you can point your stake towards their, uh, their proxy. And every time they vote, your stake is going towards that vote. So it helps people to uh, uh, be involved with the voting process without having to worry about uh, keeping up on everything. And this is all cryptographically, I just want to know, this is all cryptographically done and executable from within the BitShares wallet. Uh, I was just perusing through my own BitShares wallet last night and like, yep, there's the voting section. And when I click on the voting section, I can see all of the current work worker and pr committee proposals that are currently, you know, up for a vote. And right. then sure enough, in the um, the, the proxy section or whatever, I can I can assign my bit shares to someone else who I think uh, would make a more educated vote than I. That's right. It's all there within the wallet. So uh, the client uh, gives you a graphical representation. So it's very easy for the end user to be able to just within a few clicks, uh, be able to uh, place their, their votes or be able to assign to a proxy. So now, what what attracted you to BitShares? I mean, with this bunker and with this crypto savviness that you have, um, why of all nodes out of all networks have you chosen to dedicate your time and energies to BitShares in particular? Well, I was introduced to BitShares a couple of years ago uh, by another associate who was heavily into Bitcoin. I've been following Bitcoin for almost ever since it existed. Uh, I initially saw a lot of the issues with the infrastructure when I first looked at it. I looked at ways that I could get involved. I looked at mining, but I never made that step. And what did you think that the issues with the infrastructure were? Well, it wasn't necessarily the infrastructure, but the opportunity uh, was 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 very hard to understand. Uh, there was mining. Uh, there was being able to buy bitcoins. There was the fluctuations in the markets. And it just was really hard to grasp where you could get in there without such high risk. Um, and I didn't, and, it, and I couldn't grab, I couldn't find a, a way to really approach it and that, that I was comfortable with. Uh, so uh, two years back, uh, about August, 2014, uh, I was introduced to BitShares uh, just after uh, they had launched. And uh, I was actually uh, work looking at their witness node technology. It was still very early in development. Uh, so I kind of put it aside, but I decided back then that it looked like the whole system looked like it made sense. So I took whatever Bitcoin I had at that time and I put it into BitShares. And then I stepped away for a few months and then I came back. Things had stabilized more. And so I was more, I was more excited about where it was at at that point. And I got heavily involved in the community at that time. All right. Yeah. Well, that that is really everything that I wanted to know. That is all, you know, is it safe to say that, okay, so if no one else has an operation like you have, that if there were a sort of like EMP or other extreme event that you may have the last copy of the last blockchain in the world? That is safe to say, absolutely. We're not just, it's not just our infrastructure that makes us safe, but it's also our location. Um, being in Nova Scotia, Canada is very remote. <laughs> There's nobody looking to come after us out here. Uh, but uh, in terms of the blockchain and in terms of other blockchains, uh, mm -hmm. after my article came out, I actually got a bit of a response from people who have stake in other other chains. Mm -hmm. And it's actually led me to create an initiative. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion in BitShares lately about side chains. Um, I'm sure you've heard about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, we've been uh, looking at ways that we could, uh, by taking side chain technology and connecting it to the BitShares decentralized exchange, 
we have an opportunity at the bunker to be able to protect other bitch, uh, other blockchains and then what? to be able to actually trade on the BitShares decentralized exchange completely secure. So we created this initiative. It's called Blockchain Bunker. Uh, we created a website called blockchainbunker.com. And uh, what we're looking to do is to try to unify the blockchain world so that we can create side chains and use the BitShares decentralized exchange as a means for them to have a decentralized exchange because today they're completely uh, connected to nothing but centralized exchanges. So they only have, if something happens to that centralized exchange, down goes their trading, right? So, and also if anything happens to the, you know, a, a natural event that would occur, down goes their network. So uh, the initiative came out of the article I actually put out uh, from the response I got to uh, take the sidechain opportunity as a way to be able to protect other blockchains out there and then also enable them so that they have uh, the trading power of BitShares to back their, their blockchain. So this way we can help to bring more value to their chains and also protect them at the same time. Okay, so are you telling me that as side chains of BitShares, copies of other blockchains, say Monero, Dash, Dogecoin, right. could be preserved uh, as, as side chains of BitShares and protected in a bunker like yours in case of a disaster? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. We want to try to bring that that same value to the rest of the blockchain community. I'm going to have to sit and think for a while about how that could work and about how you could extend the decentralized exchange built into BitShares to other networks. Wow. I'm, I'm, I, I haven't even thought about that enough to be able to ask you any questions about that and utilize more of your time and knowledge right here in this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and um, say thank you for your time. And maybe would it be okay if I sent you like a follow-up email at some point after I've like tried to wrap my head around this? Absolutely. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, you said it was at blockchainbunker.com. Um, what, and is there, what's the URL of your blog where you published the post? Blockchain, oh, where I, I published the post uh, last week. Yeah, or um, I guess just where I found your your initial announcement about burying the node in the bunker. I, I basically am just saying, like, do you have a blog or something that you'd like people it to was visit? Posted, it was posted on one of our company's uh, blog sites at datasecuritynode.com uh, because they, that is where it is actually located. Uh, but the post, uh, the primary post was done actually on my LinkedIn profile. So oh, it has an op-ed that was done in the pulse. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Jonathan Baha'i, and have a great Nova Scotian day. Certainly. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Today's episode is brought to you by the Merkle, a cryptocurrency and blockchain news hub that is just as much known for its technical analyses as for its early issuance of scam warnings. The Merkle has played consumer advocate by sounding the alarm on several questionable operations in the past. These stories are all available at themerkle.com or get them fed to you social style via the Merkle's Twitter or Facebook page. And my friends, I'm happy to tell you that my AMA, my Ask Me Anything, has been scheduled for Saturday, March 26th at reddit.com slash r slash the daily decrypt. So anytime that day, Stop on by and leave a question in the thread that you will find there. Cheerio, Gabna. Have a good day. Hashocracy is the current governance model of many top cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Monero. There are two other top cryptocurrencies, however, which are not pure hashocracies. One of them is a seeming evolution of hashocracy, and the other is a complete overhaul of hashocracy. Hashocracy.